Greetings! Welcome to a new Let's Play. Yes, it's UFO Aftermath. This is a game in a similar kind of genre and theme to the XCOM series. But it's a kind of a real time strategy with pause and play mechanics apparently gonna play on easy and we'll start in America because this game is no slouch and it allows for a decent build up during the early game before it starts really getting to the point where you want to pull your hair out so yep let's go uh, I know it's been an absolute age since my last let's play um, life has been interesting up and down uh, good and bad but yeah you know I mean circumstances have that prevented me from being able to do let's plays as now allowed me to start them again for want of a better term so um, basically I ended up moving away with my missus and she passed away a couple of months ago so I've been trying to find what I'm going to be doing with my life since then I know she's about and she would have wanted me to get back to my let's plays which is why I'm doing these After all, just before she died, I got a new computer and we were sitting out so that I could get back into a Let's Play schedule um, before she passed away during lockdown. You know, that should give you some context of when this is if you're looking back in a playlist. Back in 2020, just as we're, the world was coming out the first wave of corona, coronavirus, COVID-19 and all that silliness because in many ways the world did go quite silly but at least the thing is with let's players you didn't have to worry about you don't have to worry about social distancing online anyway enough waffling let's get into the game what I will do is I will play the tutorial show off the game a bit and take it from there so, do you want to run a tutorial? Yes. I'm not going to read all the screens, I will because there's quite a few in the tutorial, but uh, I will explain what's going on though. Yes, sir. Okay. In the aftermath of the alien attack, only a handful of people survived. By hiding in bunkers or s and sealed bases or by freak actors. Malcolm McLean is one such survivor, armed with his old cult and a shotgun, he picks his way across a once familiar city that is now littered with the remains of the dead and inhabited by strange monsters called transgenants. Your job is to guide him to the other side of town, the area outlined in green. Okay. So, this is Malcolm McLean, which is us. And we've got to get over here. Like I said, this is a uh, turn based, instead it's a kind of play and pause real time strategy game. You basically give, give orders when time's paused and those orders will be carried out when you unpause it. So for example we can set Malcolm to run over to the car to take some cover and when we press unpause there's one. There we go. We'll go. Now what happened is we've seen the enemy, which is our the dangle flow, which is our first transgenant. Uh, it's paused and we can start a new plan. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep up with the old one. Going to go over there. You could queue by going, you know what, we'll have two and we'll see how they run that should give us some time disappeared come back 
not got any room to you haven't really got a hit chance got a hit chance from there so we might move a couple of steps forward and shoot and he's down okay and even though we don't need to worry we will finish it off and he's dead okay that's pretty much how you play the game the moment we only have one member in our squad we will go as we make way we'll pick up a second and generally the idea is to get your squad to achieve the missions to get to the end that's the game in a nutshell but like all every Epcot game um, and that genre although it seems simple they are like the tip of the iceberg as you do things like research and new factors in the game come out and all sorts so yeah let's go got this running walking should we walk or should we all walk? done sir well not very observe we're not very observant when walking even though walking is slower and there's our second man so what we're gonna do are we are going to change our equipment we want Basically, we're doing a med kit, although Malcolm's quite naff. All these are random. For now, this is probably the one mission that remains the same, or one of the few missions, set piece missions that remain the same. There are several of them about. A lot of them, though, are procedurally generated, so to some degree, and mostly random. So it really doesn't matter. All done, sir. So there you go, we've equipped. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna run over here. Okay, we will cancel that, we will literally run over there. And go get Brian up and standing. Okay. So heal. Ready. Should be enough to get going. Swap round to get back. Now Brian. Ready, sir. He's armed with our Uzi. And basically what he's gonna do is Here's where we learn about different fire modes. In this case, we're literally gonna walk up to the end. Ready. Backed up by our medic, Malcolm. Heads up. I think Malcolm could probably kill him. Yeah, shoot from there. I'm under attack. Get shot in the meantime. What now, sir? Okay. Get this over if it's quite simple. Yes, sir. You can do it, play through these relatively quickly, these missions. Like I said, it's on easy, so. Because the early missions, especially the tutorial, you won't worry in too much. But trust me, this game is no slouch when you start getting up to things and some of the deadlier enemies and you find they're spawned right oh, behind buildings for, orders. for example <laughs> so you it's not that it's unfair yes sir it's just it can be quite a surprise and bad luck can ruin your strategy if not the entire game but easy come easy go so it's us opening the door, we're running off. We've got to get to this base. 
And that's pretty up, pretty much the mission. Awaiting done. further orders. Okay. And we will end. And the main reason for doing the tutorial. Brian and Malcolm, who you always start with, get a new level and it's great because it gives you that little bit of edge. Okay. So, what we do at the moment, this is the level up screen. Now, the way it works is uh, each character has six abilities. Combinations of these abilities feed into the skills which in turn determine what the character can do, their chances, etc, etc. Um, when you level up, instead of actually leveling up the skills, you level up the abilities and they in turn, those increases then feed into the skills. So for example, we have a very good agility, we can level up that to excellent which increases our rifles handguns throwing speed and dodging so we get to do that for everyone who leveled up in this case that's Malcolm and if for Brian his intelligence is excellent will increase his aliens medical Observation, side power, and launches. Um, the starting abilities are all randomised for all new recruits, including these two. So, characters, especially when you go with the kind of specialising I like to go for, i.e., I like to make the good great and uh, let someone else deal with the shortfalls. Yeah. You can get very, very games because in one thing you might find that Malcolm might be a medic and another one he might be kitted out to be a good sniper. And sometimes he, they just they just don't start off that good. But you take the rough with the smooth and we're done. That's it. That's the mission. Congratulations. Your first tactical mission was concluded. There was more fighting in the weeks that followed, including desperate encounters where survival was the only objective, but eventually order emerged amid the chaos. Organisation was established, calling itself the Council of Earth, aiming to unite what was left of humanity, and wrest control of the planet from the aliens and their minions. At present, the Council controls only one base and the area around it. You have been chosen to be commander of the Earth's military and the leader of their spearhead unit, Phoenix Company. Welcome, Command. We, the Council of Earth, are pleased by your acceptance of our offer. You will be responsible for our overall strategy. We will inform you about any trouble spots immediately, and we expect you to determine which are strategically most important and engage them with your elite squad, the Phoenix Company. You will also guide such research and manufacturing capabilities we have available. You have the best weapons obtainable and we will give you more if we find them. You will get our best men and women and you can use them to create an excellent team. These are great powers to go with such great responsibility. The destiny of humanity is your, in your hands, Commander. So, um, this is basically the strategic. This area over here is what we control say we control one but actually we control two bases we have one military base which is where you need to have one military base in order to be able to launch missions and if you don't can't launch missions then you aren't really advancing the story and we have a manufacturing base what we're missing is a research base but you can change types of bases as you need at the moment it's the 1st of January 2005 and yeah so let's go there are actually two branches of research research and development research is your sphery side and even though we don't have any research facilities we can still set what we want to in this case 
we have the twilight and fall. Most of the human race is gone. Unprecedented destruction has been wrought upon the planet. We must ask ourselves what happened, why it happened, and where we can go from here. So we can set that to be done. As soon as we get some research facilities, we'll start developing that. Okay, in terms of development, this is more the technical side. So not only do you have your technologies ready for development, but if they lead to things that you can manufacture, like improved armor, then basically you will do in them instead of further technology development. In this case, we have UFO detection, which is really what gets everything off the ground. We have reports of UFO sightings from the people on the ground, but they're invisible to our long range radars. We have to develop a means of detecting these alien ships so that we can engage them. After all, if we can't engage them, we can't shoot them down. If we can't shoot them down, we can't then try and get inside them, steal their technology, and find other ways to advance and figure out what's going on. So obviously, and given the way it's set up with development as opposed to research to start with, it's clear indication that UFO detection is, nor is the way, normally the way to go. You don't have to go this way, but it's the way we're going to go. And finally, let's have a look at our squad. Okay, now let's clear these up. Because you always get the same equipment in the tutorial mission, regardless of whether the skills are actually any good. Plus, you may want to do some training if you can find it. For example, Brian can train to be a medic. Now, even though these, basically what these trainings do is they improve a number of skills which prove, prove them first. For example, you can improve your medic course, so your medic, the medical capacity for Brian goes up from being very good to excellent. And which basically gives you one whole bar. Um, the skills don't stack, so if you like, say, become, uh, take speed and then do a shoulder training where you also get speed, you don't get the extra speed. It's just plus one speed. But there's nothing stopping you from taking all of these, which basically means getting plus one into each and every skill. It's another way to help personalise the way the, the, the uh, way the characters are. In this case, Brian will is going to be our medic. So, training. Unfortunately, training takes him out of the pool for now. So he can't go on missions, but that's not a problem. We have the starting equipment, which is why I didn't pick up anything in the tutorial. Not that it matters, the only thing you can get is a gun which is actually worse than your Colt for some reason. Uh, they're actually unlimited. The rest of the rest of them, if you start picking up items, they will have been limited in terms of how ammo and how many you've got. So yeah. But in terms of basic basic light armor the Colt, the Uzi, the shotgun, and your med kits and grenades are all pretty much infinite. So you can, you do can equip your your team members in the bare minimum before they even get started. So yeah, Let's see what we got. Da, 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 da. So looking at Malcolm. He's very good at rifles, which is basically giving him a shotgun. Fair enough. Whereas, oh, okay. She is okay as a medic, so we can make, give her, make her a medic. If we can. Give her a cult. Not really good at 
I haven't really got anything using launchers for it to be good at. So, basically, yeah. Yep, that's what we'll deal with. Stem setup. Now, when we're ready, which we'll we do in the next episode, hopefully, we'll start the game running, missions will turn, and we'll see how things go on. Until then, I think I'm going to save it here. And until next time, goodbye.